Good morning, neighbors. Good morning. All right, that's the Ward 8 I know. My name is Perry Moon, and I am the executive director of the Far Southeast Collaborative. <laughs> and on behalf of our board of directors and our amazingly um, hardworking staff, I want to welcome you. <laughs> Welcome you to this celebration um, as we break ground for our new headquarters um, located here in our home of Historic Anacostia. <laughs> for those of you who were here earlier, you um, heard the Garfield Elementary Rams uh, marching band. I wanted to acknowledge the principal, Mr. Branch. He's somewhere. Mr. Branch. Mr. Branch is doing amazing things at, at Garfield, and um, he's one of our strongest school partners. So thank you so much, Mr. Branch. At this point, I am really pleased to present to you a person who has supported this project uh, from the very beginning and has not just supported in words, but um, put the city's uh, resources behind this project. We're so happy to have uh, with us today our mayor, the Honorable Muriel Bowser. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. It is a great day in Ward 8, isn't it? It's a great day in Washington, D.C., and I'm just really proud to be here uh, to help the Far Southeast Family Strengthening Collaborative with a milestone in their 20-year history. Let's hear it for the collaborative. So Perry, we want to thank you and your entire team. It looks like everybody has on a yellow shirt. Where are you, Far Southeast? All right, give them a big round of applause for the work that they're doing to support families in our city, because that's the bottom line, right? Uh, we can have a lot of progress, but it won't mean a thing if our families and the people of Washington, D.C. aren't experiencing that progress. And that is exactly what we've been up to in the Bowser administration for the last 20 months, making sure we're building on the progress of our city uh, and making sure more Washingtonians experience that progress. And I can't think of a better way or a more exemplary project uh, than to be right here on Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue talking about how we're going to strengthen families and add amenities to historic Anacostia. Uh, that's a good thing, and that's a good day in Washington, D.C. Uh, let me acknowledge a few people that have been very instrumental in getting us here today. I want to first acknowledge a woman who's been fighting hard for Ward 8, making sure Ward 8 residents and businesses and nonprofits profits have the resources that they need uh, in this project is another such example. Councilmember LaRuby May, thank you for your support. Let me uh, recognize uh, Alyssa Silverman who is here, the at-large council member Alyssa. Let's give her a round of applause. But also members of my team uh, who have been very focused on getting us uh, to this day, the deputy mayor for planning and economic development and his entire team, Brian Kenner. There's also a green component. It wouldn't be the Bowser administration without a green component. And I want to acknowledge Tommy Wells, who is the director of Department of Energy and the Environment and a far southeast neighbor from housing and community development, Polly Donaldson. Give her a big round of applause. And just everybody from the community who has helped to make this project and keep it on the top of our list, but also to make it a project that's going to enhance the neighborhood. That's important, right? Uh, so when we, anytime, now you know I was a ward council member, so I've done some development projects and it's always been my focus to make sure that development isn't happening to the community, uh, but with the community. Uh, and I am just delighted that ANC commissioners, uh, the Anacostia Coordinating Committee, and so many have been involved in getting us to this day. I see former council member uh, here as well, Sandy Allen. Thank you for your support. 
see uh, Mr. Mr. Kenlow here. It's always good to see Eugene Kenlow here. I want to thank him for his, uh, for his presence as well. So let me just say a little bit uh, about the collaborative, which has been helping Ward 8 families for the last 20 years. And today marks a major milestone, as I said, Perry, uh, for the collaborative it's, it's, as it moves um, from leasing to a building that it owns right here on Martin Luther King Avenue. So we want to thank you for your commitment in putting your marker down. Uh, you're going to be hearing from another person who has put a marker down in Washington, D.C. as well. Uh, and his bus boys and poets celebrated 10 years last year. Andy Shalaw, we want to thank you for your vision and commitment to Washington, D.C. I think you're up to six locations in D.C. Or maybe this is the sixth in D.C. There's another to seventh in Washington, D.C. Uh, and Andy not only has been known for banging art and books with his restaurants, but really training D.C. residents for careers uh, in the business. So what Andy has done is not just create a successful local chain um, that we all love, because I love that black and salmon, I really do. It's also about creating community where art and music and passion and politics uh, can be celebrated over food and, and wine and laughs and tears in some cases. And Andy continues to give back to the district as well. He got one of those phone calls I sometimes make to people that says, you know, Andy, I have a great opportunity for you to serve the residents of the District of Columbia. And he said yes. So now he chairs our workforce investment council, bringing an entrepreneur's practical know-how to the business of putting uh, DC residents back to work. So we also promised and we are spend every day trying to deliver or making sure we're investing in neighborhoods that haven't had private sector investment or public investment and bringing real investment to Ward 8. And that was the commitment that we've made. So let me tell you what, what it's taken to, to help Far Southeast get here from the public sector's um, um, perspective. That is $14.6 million into this project. $3 million in a grant from the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development's office that we fought really hard to make sure we could add to the FY16 budget last year in a supplemental budget. $2.2 million from the Property Assessed Clean Energy Equity Contribution, otherwise known as the PACE program, which is administered by the Department of Energy and Environment. And over $8 million in industrial revenue brawn program loans that helps get this project together. So we are thrilled today to be breaking ground on this historic project in historic Anacostia. I want to thank the collaborative for its vision. I want to thank my team for always making a way when there appeared to be no way, uh, when we weren't sure this project would get through uh, and over obstacles. Uh, we decided that we would find a way and we would bring everybody along with us. I want to thank the council member again because it was no certainty uh, that because I put it in the supplemental budget that it would make it, um, but she made sure uh, that, that it did. So it brings me great, great pleasure to uh, recognize and introduce to, pod to the podium uh, my friend, LaRuby May. So good morning. Uh, so let me, let me start the, the way I start every time I have the privilege of representing the great, wonderful residents of Ward 8, and that's first by thanking the Creator. So grateful, so blessed to have the opportunity to serve uh, the best ward with the best resident in the entire District of Columbia. <laughs> And, and so let me, let, let me acknowledge, I know the mayor acknowledged a lot of people who've put great work into this, but obviously the, the Far Southeast Collaborative, thank you for your work, whether or not it's when you have a program manager or a support worker working at Garfield School or in many of our schools making sure our families are receiving not just quality education but holistic family services to be successful. Um, want to acknowledge the board. I see Ms. Holly and Ms. Fleming and the council member and uh, uh, Mr. Kinlow and 
and, and all of the great members, and Ms. Oramenta, all the great board members who volunteer their time at the Far Se Southeast Collaborative to make sure that things are happening. So, so I remember uh, uh, having a conversation with the board members. And they came in and said, Council Member, you know, we need your help. Uh, we're about $3 million short of being able to make this a reality. And I was like, well, you know, I did come from the private sector and I do have a checkbook, but I might not have a check big enough to bridge that $3 million gap. And I said, but there's one thing that I know. I know that along the campaign trail and every day, our mayor has said that, LaRuby, I have a commitment to the businesses and to the residents of Ward 8. And so I went to her and said, you know, remember what you had said <laughs> about your commitment to the residents of Ward 8? And she said, yep. And I said, well, that commitment is going to cost you $3 million today. <laughs> and without hesitation, without flinching, this mayor worked with her deputy mayor team, Demped, and we were able to find the $3 million so that we are, have an opportunity to stand here today. So I want to express my true gratitude to this mayor who's been able to make sure that, that Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue becomes the greatest, most outstanding Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue in this country. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, th thank you, Mayor Bowser. And so, again, thank you uh, uh, for all of the hard work collaborative that you continue to do each and every day for the families in Ward 8. Um, I, there are a lot of people out here today that may not understand the daily impact and the daily influence that you have on the lives of our children and our families. But I do. And I am sincerely grateful to be a part of it, to know you guys, to do Perry and Dion, all your great work. And I look forward to coming and eating at Busboy and Poets. I look forward to seeing uh, black businesses and Ward 8 businesses being a part of the construction of this site. I look forward to, absolutely, I look forward to some of my neighbors and some young folk from Ward 8 waiting tables and bartending and, and in the kitchen at Busboy and Poets um, and, and, and bringing this economic a resource to our community. So again, thank you very much, and I look forward to not only today, but the future right here on Martin Luther King Avenue. Thank you. Can, can we give our mayor and council member another hand? Council member May may not remember this, I'm, I'm sure she does, but even before she was council member, um, I came to her and said, you know, we're, we're thinking about this project and, you know, I just need to pick your brain for a little while and, and tell me how we can make this happen. So I thank you for your commitment as council member and even as a private citizen. Thank you so much. <clears throat> At this point, we're going to uh, ask our funders. This, as you heard, was a, a complicated uh, um, transaction, exciting but complicated. And so we want to recognize our funders, Vivian Jackson from United Bank, Bracken Hendricks from Urban Ingenuity, and Orminta Newsom of Lisk. Good morning, Anacostia. Good morning. My name is Vivian Jackson. I represent United Bank. We are so honored that we were able to partner with so many different people to get this project um, aboard with the DC tr um, tax exempt, the DC PACE. My former boss, Tom Nider, when this came to his desk by Perry, I said, we're going to do what? <laughs> um, but he worked hard and did everything that he can to make this dream happen today. Tom Knight grew up in Anacostia, so this was very passionate to him. This is passionate to me because I can walk actually to one of my residents' home right around the corner. So great, and we are so excited that, that this is happening in Anacostia. Thank you. Um, I'm Bracken Hendricks uh, with Urban Ingenuity, and we run the Washington, D.C. PACE financing program. And PACE stands for Property Assessed Clean Energy, and it's a tool offered by the District Department of Energy and Environment uh, that funds any kind of a measure that's going to save you more in energy or water bills than it costs. 
So we're very, very proud that PACE is contributing $2.2 million uh, to building this building. Uh, and every single one of those measures is going to actually save more than it costs. So we were able to take $2.2 million out of the budget so that money could be spent on other things. Uh, and I really want to thank uh, William Liggins and the, uh, the Revenue Bond Program and, and uh, the United Bank for their vision in bringing PACE into this project. Um, I want to just quickly tell you what it's funding. It's funding a more efficient heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system, LED lighting, low flow fixtures, a much better envelope. So it's actually not only going to be a cheaper building, but it's going to be a better and more comfortable building for the people that this property serves and for the people who work there every day. Uh, importantly, and I think the mayor very eloquently said every economic development project should have an, a green component. Uh, this project, the PACE funding, about 50% of that money is going directly to community-based enterprises, and uh, uh, at least 30% of that money, as at last I looked at the budget, was going into businesses here in Ward 8. So what we want to say is that green investment and green jobs and green economic development is smarter investment for the people of Ward 8 and for the District of Columbia. Uh, and we're so excited to be part of this event, and uh, really thank you to Perry and, and your vision. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That is. I am Araminta Newsom, Vice President with the Local Initiative Support Corporation, commonly called LISC, and I am so happy to be here with my Ward 8 friends. I have had the privilege of working in this neighborhood for over 20 years, investing in projects and people and programs. So when I got a call from Perry, I went, hmm, another opportunity. Another opportunity for us as an investor in a better quality of life in D.C. Another opportunity for us to use the dollars that we have to make sure that people are able to build on their assets, address their challenges, and gain new opportunities. So Perry and I sat and talked and said, okay, how do we do this? You know, we clearly are not a bank. We don't have millions of dollars. But what we have... <laughs> is a dollar amount that we know how to invest strategically. And the best investment that we could make was in the, into Far Southeast Collaborative. So we provided the grant dollars, the upfront grant dollars, that allowed Perry to do all that running around that he needed to do. All those different surveys and all those different uh, accounting activities or legal activities. Because for us, that's where we start invest in our nonprofit partners and they make it happen. Invest in their day-to-day -day operations in their capacity to bring this type of resource to this community. So Perry, we are so excited to be here today. Uh, it's been, what, a little about three years, I guess, since that first meeting. And um, we look forward to continuing to work with you. And Mr. Shalal, we look forward to continuing to working with you. So thank you very much for this opportunity for us to invest in Ward 8. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And I know this is dangerous, but I did want to acknowledge uh, just a couple of people. Reverend Willie Wilson is here. Thank you for coming, Pastor. And Charles Wilson, who's one of our neighbors, and, and Charles was literally the very first person uh, to bring some of our other neighbors on board in supporting this project. So I just wanted to acknowledge Charles Wilson for so as you heard, this is a partnership, and the thing that makes partnerships work are partners. So at this point, I'd like to introduce Andy Shalal, the owner of Busboy and Poets, uh, Arrington Dixon, the chairman of the Anacostia Coordinating Council, and Reverend Eugene Kenlow, the president of the Far Southeast Board of Directors. Good morning, Ward 8. I know it's cloudy, but I feel the sunshine. Thank you all for being here. Every time I cross the river, I think of Langston Hughes and his poem about rivers. I've known rivers, ancient of the world and older than the flow of human blood through human veins. My soul runs deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut in the Congo as it lulled me to sleep. I stood in the Nile and saw the pyramids rise high above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln came down to New Orleans and saw its mighty bosom. 
grow all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient dusky rivers. My soul runs deep like the rivers. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to say a very special thank you to the mayor uh, for really making sure this project happens. Uh, a lot of work goes into play to make a project like this happen. Uh, I want to thank the deputy mayor, economic development, Courtney Snowden. I don't know if she's here, uh, but I would, uh, I would like to thank her. She was instrumental in this. Uh, Tommy Wells for the Green Program. Thank you all for, for being here, and certainly the collaborative working with, with Perry and his team has been great. Uh, it's a lot of work, and they've, they were there at all times, just sitting uh, at the table and making sure that we keep moving this forward. Uh, and Mr. Kinlow, of course, the chairman of the board of the collaborative, I appreciate all the support and all the effort you put into this as well, Mr. Kinlow. Thank you so much. Um, you know, this is a uh, this is a labor of love, really. It's a I know that that oftentimes you know when we think of a restaurant, we think of a place to eat. But I'd like to remind you that Busboys and Poets is more than just a place to eat. We are really a place where we say in our mission, we are a place for racial and cultural connections to be consciously uplifted, and that's what we do. We are a place just like Ward Eight, where art, culture, and politics come together and collide and create amazing sparks. We are a place to take that deliberate pause, and we hope that all of you will be able to come and take that deliberate pause in our space and feed your mind, body, and soul. We're going to have a performance space in there. We're going to have poetry and music. Words Beats of Life, I believe, is here. Um, I, where are you, Mozzie? Somewhere that, right back there. Uh, so Words Beats of Life, we work with them, and they work with young people to, to bring out the art in people, because art lifts the spirits, and that's what we do. Uh, the poets that we have, Pages Matam is here. Thank you so much, Pages, our, our dope our director of poetry events, that's what we call them, and our, and our events team, led by Alicia and Patrick and Denisha and Sierra and uh, Erica and everybody else that's, that's here. We really appreciate all of you, all of you being here. I know, uh, you know, and, and, I'm, and I'm sorry for taking a little bit more time, Perry is kind of, is, is trying to pull me with the hook, but, but, but I, I want to say there's a lot of suspicion uh, about a a, a business that's coming toward eight. And I want to acknowledge that. It's in the room. I want to acknowledge that. I want to acknowledge the, the suspicion and the concern people have. I assure you that my commitment goes way beyond just a business. It is really an effort to try to create a space here in Ward 8 and prove to the rest of the city that Ward 8 is alive, it's vibrant, it's exciting, and it's open for business, all kinds of business. I want to make sure that the city continues to encourage particularly minority business, black-owned businesses, to continue to grow and thrive in this area so it doesn't become another push-out. That's not what this is about. I want to make sure that that's acknowledged and it's out there in the front. And, and I want to appreciate all the support and love letters that we've gotten from all of you, all the effort that has come into making this happen. If it wasn't for your support and your desire to want this here, I wouldn't be here. So I really want to thank you all for being such a part of this. This is not just my space. This is all of your space. And I really want to thank all of you for being here, taking the time today to come out and, and, and support. This gives me a lot of uh, uh, heartfelt thanks, really, to, to see how much outpouring of love that this coming out of this community. And I promise you that the love will be given back. Thank you so much. Good morning, community. It's always good to be with our community in Anacostia. I have a few things I'd like to say. First of all, the, the comment about the river is important to me. You know how I feel about the Anacostia River. And it's special because it runs through our community. Uh, it doesn't run anywhere else, just through our community, which is a very powerful spirit, I think. Also, I want to let the, the, the mayor know and that uh, I like the, uh, I'm much more, I like, I like the uh, catfish. With, with the spiked, limit, the spiked iced tea. Uh, so that's what I would, but I, I want to move on to something else. You know, um, this effort will be successful only if our community, not just the Anacostia community, but the community at large, patronizes it, supports it, and brings the breaking of bread and the commun communing that takes place when you break bread in this particular restaurant. Uh, and I know we can do it. We will do it. I also want to uh, make uh, mention that uh, I brought my business because I wear a few hats. We all do. 
of my business here about 30 years ago, an, an IT firm. We've been blessed to be successful. I have over 60-some people working for me, some here and some of the other locations, and a third or more of them come from this community. So I know a business can operate in the community. Uh, I've done this, and I'm very proud of it, and I want to let Andy know that there is space for businesses here, and we adopt them, and we accept them, and we bring them in. I also want to reflect just for a minute on some history here. About a few years ago, an eight-year-old ma young man on his bicycle rode his bike to a barber shop that's about where the big chair is today and went in to get his hair cut. Halfway through the process, he was told, we don't cut your hair here. You'll have to leave. That young man then later used to come to this building that we're about to open now as a restaurant. And he saw a bowling alley in there, but he couldn't bowl in the bowling alley. They then brought a furniture store with some substantial furniture. And of course, he was a little older and he didn't want to buy his furniture for his house that he owned in his community. Well, now that is going to change seriously because we've got a, a place to eat, to commune that is being brought to us by this community and by the efforts of the groups that are here, all of us, the government, the restaurant, and, and, the, and, the, and the collaborative, which we need to support. I'm glad to be here with you. And also as the Anacostia Coordinating Council, not a business person, we want to do all we can to help it go forward, and we will. Thank you, and let's move forward. Good morning. Good morning. Mayor, thank you. There's so many notables here until I'm not going to start calling names. But I want to ask the members of the board, the Far Southeast Family Strength and Collaborative, to come join me, if you'd be so kind, because I see you in different places. This is a great moment. I think of a... Uh, metaphor that says a certain team in football has a practice of getting the ball to the red zone but can't get it to the end zone. And Perry here got the ball all the way to the red zone, but we ought to give him a big hand for getting the ball to the red zone. And you see all of these shirts around here. I don't know. I claim that they're gold because this guy right there is worth his weight in gold. Yeah, yeah. And to all of the figures that have been thrown out, I just want to add that this community here was able to cobble together over 16 years enough money to purchase the building in its raw state. All right. Now... I think we have just experienced what may be a prototype of a blended project. I'd never heard of Pace before. Woody, I didn't know what Pace was until you told me. <laughs> Tommy, where are you? Tommy, well, I didn't know what Pace was, but here we stand about to rehab and occupy a beautiful building that I think represents the best of blended funding from all of the various sources. But let me tell you the truth. That's what the Anacostia Far Southeast Family Strength and Collaborative has been about for 20 years. Right. That we are experts at blending. We blend resources from all aspects of our community, from the private and the non-private, the government and the non-government. So we're just going to keep on doing what we've been doing, Mayor. Right. This is what we do. And so we got to the red zone. The mayor shows up and she knows how to take the ball. She ran it on into the end zone. And then we looked around, we said, we need somebody to kick the extra point. <laughs> there was Andy over there on the sideline practicing kicks. <laughs> he practiced some more. Finally, we had to call a timeout to get him on the field, but he did finally kick the extra point. God bless you. God bless everybody. So thank you all so much. Again, there, there are so many uh, neighbors and supporters here. 
I uh, couldn't begin to acknowledge you all, but I do want to acknowledge our development team, um, Ezra, KGO, Collective Architecture, BMO, uh, Derek Woody, um, and my assistant who's since moved on but came to support the program, Kenya Wiggins. Uh, thank you all. <laughs> so now this time, if you can just help me, we want to keep this area clean. We're going to have the actual groundbreaking, so if we can make sure the cameras are able to um, get the groundbreaking. And those who are in the first group, if you would come forward. Excuse me. 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 Excuse